On today's episode, Armageddon has arrived, or has it? There is a newly discovered object in the sky that has some very real potential to create a significant impact on the Earth in our near future. According to what we know right now, this asteroid could hit us, and that's a scary thought. But instead of panicking, we're going to choose to get informed, and we're going to learn as much as we can about this potential city killer of a space rock. And speaking of panic, NASA has just increased the probability of impact to 3.1%. That's 1 in 32 odds, which means that the Earth has a better chance of being hit by an asteroid than winning a game of roulette. But before you start digging a bunker in your backyard, I'm going to tell you why this is not the end of the world. Now, the asteroid in question is named 2024 YR4, which basically just tells us that it was discovered at the very end of the year 2024. The first known sighting was Christmas Day, spotted at an observatory in Chile. The asteroid was seen coming from the direction of the Sun, flying past the Earth on a path towards Mars. So after less than two months of tracking, we've managed to deduce that YR4 moves on an elliptical path that takes it out almost as far as Jupiter and then back in to cross the orbit of Earth. This happens once every four years. So the rock is moving fast. It travels at around 13 kilometers per second. Currently, YR4 is moving away from the Earth, so it's getting dimmer in the sky and therefore more difficult to observe. By April, it's going to disappear from the view of our optical telescopes. So scientists are getting in as many observations as they can right now. They're even pulling out a secret weapon to track the asteroid into the future. And this is the most important thing. In order to accurately predict the path of an object, we need to observe it over a long period of time. Right now, we're doing a lot of observations in a short time, which has not told us very much. We are assuming that YR4 is between 40 and 90 meters in diameter. That's between 130 and 300 feet. It could have a mass anywhere between 25,000 tons and 1 million tons. We can say that it is not an M-class metallic asteroid or a carbonaceous rock. So it's an S-class stony asteroid. We also know that YR4 is rotating and it's spinning pretty fast, which means that this is not a rubble pile. This is a solid chunk of space rock. Based on that data, we can say that an impact from YR4 on the Earth would be equivalent to one of the most destructive nuclear weapons ever made, 500 times the power of the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. This will level a city and destroy everything within a thousand kilometer radius, but it will not create a global disaster. This is important for everyone to know. The impact will be severe, but it will not be an extinction level event, not even close. If such an impact were to happen, scientists have already been able to plot a line across the planet showing where that might occur. The risk corridor extends from South Asia through the middle of Africa and ends at the top of South America. So the good news is that most of this area is ocean and the majority of the land that it covers is the Central African Plains, which are mostly empty. The bad news is that there are several major cities on the path as well. Bogota, Colombia, Abidjan, Ivory Coast, Lagos, Nigeria, Khartoum, Sudan, Mumbai, India, Kolkata, India, and Dhaka, Bangladesh. Some of the most densely populated cities in the world, with a combined total of more than 100 million people living in these urban centers alone. Should the people of Lagos be panicking right now? Well, we need to consider that the current likelihood of YR4 striking the Earth is sitting at 3.1%, about 1 in 32 odds, and it's projected that the impact will happen on December 22nd, 2032. Depending on how you look at it, those odds are not exactly bad, but they're not reassuring either. And the likelihood of impact is increasing. Just last month, we were looking at closer to a 1% chance of impact. 1 in 100. Then last week, that doubled. Yesterday, it tripled. And it could double again in a very short time. We should talk about how these predictions are made. 
We've only been observing this asteroid for about two months, so we're making predictions based on where it is right now compared to where it was when it was first spotted, and then we try to figure out where it's going. And that's why we absolutely need long-term observation in order to make an accurate prediction. So what astronomers are doing right now is painting an orbit for YR4 with a very wide brush. And somewhere inside that broad brushstroke, the actual path of the asteroid is just a very fine little line. We know that it's going to be somewhere in this general path. And then as we get more data over time, we can start to narrow down the width of that brush. So when we first painted the orbit of YR4 in January, the Earth was only taking up about 1% of the potential area. And now the Earth is still on that line and it's taking up a little more than 2%. Every time we narrow the brush, if the Earth is still inside the path, then the odds of impact will rise. So be prepared for that to happen. It is likely to happen, but do not panic. Because the next time they narrow the brush, the Earth might find itself outside of the line, which means that our likelihood of impact will quickly drop back down to zero. It's going to be very confusing for people who don't understand how this works. It's probably going to be labeled as a conspiracy or fear mongering, but it's not that. It's just science. That's the way that this works. But either way, you can see why it's important that we arrive at an accurate prediction, a fine line, as soon as possible. But the asteroid is getting harder to track every day. And in a couple of months, it will be invisible to any ground-based telescope which is why NASA is authorizing the emergency use of the James Webb Space Telescope to continue observation of YR4. In March, the James Webb will be pointed directly at our potential city killer, and this is going to help us learn a lot about the rock in a very short amount of time. Because right now, all we can see is the light that YR4 is reflecting from the sun, or light that it's blocking out from distant stars as it passes over them. But James Webb can see in the infrared spectrum, which is invisible light. And that's going to allow the space telescope to get a clear picture of the object. We'll be able to nail down its exact size, its composition, and its mass. And hopefully, we'll be able to get a more accurate prediction of where it's going to be eight years from now. Either sailing past us or raining down fire on the people of India. So let's say that the chances of impact do rise higher. We reach 50%, 90%, 100% chance of impact. This is a possibility, so what response would we take? The Europeans have been the first to release an initial plan of action, and it's going to depend on what we determine the actual size of the asteroid to be. The European Space Agency has put out two scenarios. If YR4 turns out to be smaller than 50 meters diameter, we should evacuate any potential impact zones and just hope for the best but prepare for the worst. If the rock is confirmed to be larger than 50 meters diameter, ESA believes that we should make an attempt to deflect it in space, to impact YR4 and try to push it away from the Earth. This would be an extreme measure. It's something that has only been tested on a small scale once before. NASA's asteroid redirect mission, DART, launched in 2021. A year later, the spacecraft arrived at the asteroid Dimorphos and struck it head on. Dimorphos is much larger than YR4. It's 177 meters in diameter, and the DART impact was able to create a meaningful change in the orbit of this rock. The advantage of YR4 being a solid chunk of rock is that a kinetic impact will be effective at moving it. If we crash into one of the rubble pile asteroids, it's just going to break one big thing into several small things, like turning a bullet into shotgun pellets, but it wouldn't affect the direction that they're moving. But we still know so little about the science of asteroid impact. We can change the direction, sure, but how much control over that do we really have? There's a potential disaster scenario where we change the course of YR4, but we don't move it enough, and it still hits the Earth anyway. Maybe we only move the point of impact from India to China. The global politics of a situation like this are going to be an absolute mess. This is one thing we can say for certain. But until then, uncertainty will dominate this story. 
Even with the help of James Webb, we are going to lose sight of YR4 relatively soon, and we're not going to be able to pick it up again until the summer of 2028, and that's going to be the point when decisions need to be made. The people in charge will need to say for sure how seriously we are taking the threat. Anyway, the important takeaway for you is that things are likely to get worse before they get better. People will freak out, but there's no reason right now for you to be one of them.